Elections in India are monumental in scale. There are massive political rallies, road shows, massive hoardings like these, and full-page newspaper advertisement are a common sight. And then there's also social media campaign. This time around, elections will go on for 44 days in seven phases from April 19th until June 1st, which means politicians will be crisscrossing the country, engaging with the people and convening meetings. And no stone is left unturned as billions are spent to expand their support base. But where does this money come from? There's a simple answer to this and a complex one. But let's begin with a simple one. There are numerous ways political parties are funded. There's bank interest, party membership fees, contributions from meetings and rallies, sale of coupons and publications, as well as voluntary donations. But the single largest source of income for the political parties comes from electoral bonds. And this is where it gets complex. What are electoral bonds? Electoral bonds are essentially donations to political parties, facilitated by India's top bank, the State Bank of India. Think of them as currency notes. SBI sold these bonds. They were bought by individuals, groups, corporate organizations, which were then donated to the party of their choice. The political party could then redeem them. Until last month, these donations were a secret. No one knew who donated the money, how much was donated and to which political parties. But everything changed in February this year. India's Supreme Court banned electoral bonds. The Supreme Court has struck down electoral bonds. The Supreme Court unanimously called the electoral bond scheme unconstitutional. Well, the electoral bonds verdict is a, is a very good verdict. It is a big step towards transparency of political financing in India. That would be a good thing for democracy, I think. Professor Jagdeep Choka is the co-founder of the Association for Democratic Reforms, a civil society NGO which was the petitioner that challenged this system in the court. More than 50% of the, electoral, the donations through electoral bonds went to the ruling party and to all the remaining parties which are in hundreds. Uh, they all put together got about 47 or some percent. The ruling party had uh, an advantage over other parties, so it was not a level playing field, which is a requirement for free and fair elections and for a democracy. According to the numbers crunched by Professor Choker's team, individuals and companies bought 165 billion rupees worth of bonds up to November 2023. So the question is, who has benefited the most from these donations? Pushed by the Supreme Court, the State Bank of India finally revealed the top donors and the top beneficiaries. These companies, most of them from the infrastructure, metals and energy sectors, were the top donors. A lion's share of these donations flowed into the accounts of Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janta Party, followed by All India Trinamool Congress. Rahul Gandhi's Indian National Congress ranked third on this list. With so much money at disposal, Indian election is one of the world's most expensive elections. In 2019, India's election spending surged past United States, with political parties, candidates and regulatory bodies spending a whopping 8.6 billion US dollars. The only estimate available for the 2019 election is by an institution called Center for Media Studies, who said that about 55,000 to 60,000 rupees, crores of rupees were spent. 45 to 55% of this amount was spent by the ruling BJP. Congress spent about 15 to 20 percent of this amount. 35 percent of this money was spent on campaigns and 25 percent was distributed among voters illegally. Very often it is said that voters are bribed, voters are paid cash. In their daily newspaper some amount of money is put. 
there is also a widespread uh, belief that voters are given alcohol alcoholic drinks the night before uh, there have been open uh, offers by several political parties to give sewing machines to give mixer grinders to give televisions these are all above board things but obviously a whole lot of underground activity happens misuse of money hum nahi hone denge iske liye bhi humne enforcement agencies ko sab states mein enforcement agencies ke sath baithak ki hai all candidates together spent about 240 billion rupees way above the permitted limit that's right there's a limit to how much a candidate can spend in these elections a candidate can spend between 7.5 and 9.5 million rupees depending on the state they are contesting from but there is no limit set for political parties so there is huge amount of money spent in the election which to my mind is indeterminable only political parties all put together know this and they never tell that some analysts project the 2024 elections will surpass all previous records in india to become the costliest the world has ever seen with the bjp touted as the wealthiest party right now financial resources abound however despite the money power navigating elections is still not easy feat for them